So today's video is going to be more of a demonstration than anything else. Uh, I recently had a viewer ask what would happen if the erase head was not working on their VCR. And I thought about it for a second and rather than try to explain what would happen if the full erase head, which is this one right here, was not working on their VCR, I thought it best to demonstrate that and what better way to do it than to record some color bars on a new tape. This tape has never been used. These color bars are being generated by a camera. And then uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll rewind the tape. We will disconnect the head because on chassis like this, that was a real possibility. And I'll show you the reason why. This, this, we'd actually, we actually saw units like this come into the shop. On this unit, it's actually a plug-in type head. And sometimes when it was being serviced in a shop, the technician doing the work wasn't careful when he put the chassis back in and he missed the alignment of the pins. So what would happen is everything would work except for the erase head wasn't connected. And we'd get the unit into the shop and they'd say, yeah, it's got poor recording quality. Well, this is what to look for. I'm recording color bars now because this is the acid test. This will really show up when I try to make a recording over top of it. Okay, tape's rewound. Let's play the tape back now. And you'll see that uh, there's our playback. Some of you wonder how I record my uh, my test tapes with color bars. Well, this is exactly how I do it. Um, I first take a machine. I do have a factory alignment tape. And I take one of my machines and I align it on the oscilloscope so that it is aligned to factory specifications. And then I can immediately put a blank tape in, plug it into one of my cameras. It's got color bar output and record NTSC bars. That's how I make my, my test tapes. Here's playback from this tape. So now we're going to disable the erase head on this one and then we'll make a recording over top of it. Of course where we used to see these problems quite often on these machines when they came into the shop is after somebody else had tried to service them, usually the customer themselves, and they'd taken the machine all apart because you can of course lift the chassis up and out on these units. This is how you would take this apart to service like the, the uh, mechanism, right? Um, I don't know if I've done a video on this mechanism or not. If I haven't, I will. I'll do, I'll do a service video on here. But uh, people would have it out to change the belt or to do some work on the mechanism. And when they got it, put it back in, they didn't get the head properly aligned with this little plug down here. And if that happened, the head was disconnected. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to remove the head so I don't bend any pins and put this back in and show you what happens when I make a recording on it. So the head, just you just give it a turn and it comes out. There's just a little tab that holds it in place. So I'm going to put this back into the mes machine and uh, we'll do this and then uh, do a test recording. You'll see it'll still play back and everything. I'm going to put this back in here. And now my chassis is back in. I can power it up. I won't bother putting the front back on it to do this. There goes another airplane, got to stop recording until it goes by. One of the things I always disliked about Panasonic was when you unplug them, they go back to tuner. And if you've lost your remote control, there's no way to switch this thing back to line input. That's one of the things that really I disliked about Panasonic. I'm just going to switch the color bars off now on the camera so that I can uh, get a picture. I'm going to find the bar switch on here. Where is it? Camera. It's raining today, as you can see. I'm afraid this camera's probably seen better days. The lens is kind of foobarred on it. Good enough. We'll catch the lake in my front yard. The uh, lake was left after that water main broke and uh, they repaired it, but they still haven't repaired my driveway. So we'll record this. So if you look, I press play. We'll see, see that there's color bars on the tape. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in the right speed. I'm gonna make sure that I'm still in SP, which I am. Okay, I'll press record and we'll record some of this over top of the tape 
that's got color bars on it. But of course, the tape isn't being erased because I've removed the erase head. So then you'll see the symptom when I play it back. You'll see what the symptom looks like if your erase circuit is not functional. And this applies to all video tape machines, all VHS and all beta. People that had uh, VCRs that had uh, insertion feature, like video insert, that did not have flying erase heads already know what this is going to look like. But it probably is going to look a little bit worse on this machine because this machine is not attempting to do a video insert without flying erase heads. Some of the machines that were on the market that actually had that feature would actually uh, crank up the record current during the overdub process to try and blank the tape. But this one, of course, is not a machine that's designed to do that. So let's rewind the tape here. Whoops. I hope if I grab the right remote control. Let's rewind the tape. Good enough. Okay. So this is going to play back where the, the color bars are on the tape. And then when it gets to about zero is where I made the new recording. So you'll see what happens. And you're, what you're going to see is you're going to see the color bars that are still on the tape flashing in the background. As it's going to over record. And the way that the system works, it's a, it's a, it's a FM carrier that, uh, there we go. It's an FM carrier that records the video. But the chroma is direct recorded. It's a, it's a converted frequency. So the FM signal actually does a pretty good job. That's the display on the machine coming up here, if I can turn that off. Over here, display. The FM signal for the luminance portion does a pretty good job of wiping the underlying video tracks, but it doesn't do anything for the chroma because it was more of a direct recording at a lower frequency. So the erase head is what gets rid of it, cleans everything up. So people that had VCRs that had insert functions that did not have flying erase heads, this is the type of garbage that they got. Now, again, I I use color bars. Oh, I came up when I was actually making the recording and it recorded that. That's why it says that. That was, uh, it was in line mode when I did it. Uh, anyway. You see what the, the symptom looks like here if you don't have your erase head working. We'll stop the tape. Now, it will get progressively worse if I were to record over it again with something else. Make another recording over top of it. Stop it and play it back. And what you're going to see is at the end of the recording, it's going to treat it more like an insert recording. As soon as the video ends, with all the flashing in the background, okay, there's the next shot. Now you see you've got, not only do you have the, some of the color from the color bars that were there, but you have video from the previous frame as well. And then it goes back to what was on the recording before. Let's reconnect the erase head and do an erase over top of this. Incidentally, the erase head just on these particular bottles just pops in like that and then you give it a twist and it locks into place. On these ones. Other ones are different, but on this one here, there's, there's no alignment required on an erase head. It's just a full erase track, so it's, there's no alignment like there is on the audio head. It's just a full track a head, a erase head, just a coil wire with a gap that covers the full width of the tape. So there is no alignment to deal with on that. Put the deck back in. Drop it into place. Power it back up again. Let's see if I can do this before the next airplane flies overhead because it seems like there's been one going by here about every five minutes. Okay, let's do another recording here. I found another portion of, of color bars. 
So we'll start recording when we get to the, uh, the 10 second point. Okay, I'll pause it. I'm going to put it in record. Now we got geese flying by. Squawking away. Okay. Now you'll see. And what you'll see happen here is because there's a, a slight space between the erase head and where the video is, you'll actually see the old material and it will it'll go down from the top as it clears the tape off. And then when I stop the recording, like now, if I rewind that back. Okay, now watch what happens at the, at the cut-in point. At the 10 second point, it should cut in right about now. You see the color bars flashing, and then as the erase head wipes it clear, that's the effect of your full erase head on VHS tapes. I don't know why that pops up every time you start a recording. I think what it does is it records that on the tape. Um, so that when you play your tape back, it tells you what time and then the end of the recording. And what you'll see is once the video returns for the previous recording, it'll kick back in. That's because this machine's got muting. Now, I don't know if I can turn the muting off on this. Some of these machines, you could turn off the video muting. Let's just see if this is one such machine. Let's get the remote here for it. Timestamp, that's what that was. That's what put that on the screen. Set up. I guess it doesn't have um, repeat play. Set up a feature. Now I guess this one doesn't have muting. Some of the VCRs you could turn off the blue screen and at the end of the recording you'd see snow and then you'd see the old recording come back in from the top. Anyway, that's just a basic demonstration of what the erase head does on a VCR. Thanks for watching.